Hello and welcome to another episode of the Secular Buddhism Podcast. This is episode number 103. I am your host, Noah Roshetta, and today I'm talking about making time for nothing. Keep in mind you don't need to use what you learn from Buddhism to be a Buddhist. You can use what you learn to be a better whatever you already are. So I wanted to talk a little bit today about this concept of making time for nothing. I can't remember where I first heard that quote, or not that quote, but that expression. Perhaps it was the chapter of a book I read, or it was included somewhere in a quote. But I remember thinking uh, how interesting to make time for nothing. Uh, later on, I came across a book by Thich Nhat Hanh, uh, Buddhism at Bedtime. I think that's the book. In one of the books that I read to my kids at night, at the very beginning, it has a section about nothingness. And Thich Nhat Hanh asks this question. He says, is nothing something? And he goes on to say that, yes, nothing is something. Because the moment I say nothing, uh, or, or that I talk to you about the concept of nothingness, something pops into your mind. It's an idea, you know, nothingness, nothingness as the absence of something. But in that sense, uh, nothing is something. (laughs) So I remember kind of exploring that idea in my head and thinking, what is nothingness? And then recently coming across another quote that uh, I shared on Facebook Facebook earlier in the week on my own personal page. Um, But it's a quote that was shared by Ethan Nickton. And he says, there, there might be no greater skill that comes from sustained meditation practice than the increased ability to tolerate boredom. The ability to be bored and not freak out is everything. It might be the key to surviving this technological age. And I like that because I think about this in terms of myself and and with my kids that, you know, one of the greatest things I can teach them and teach myself is how to be comfortable with boredom. And it it reminds me of this other quote that I like from Blaise Pascal who says, All of humanity's problems stem from our inability to sit quietly in a room alone. The actual quote is from man's inability to sit quietly in a room alone, but I I replaced man's for our because it's applying to all of us. All of humanity's problems stem from our inability to sit quietly in a room alone. Think about that for a moment. You know, how, how difficult is it for you to sit quietly in a room alone? This concept of boredom, uh, this concept of nothingness. You know, when you're doing nothing, are you doing something? I would say that the answer to that is yes. And I think there's a little bit of a misunderstanding that happens with this way of thinking due to the concept that we associate with the word nothing. You know, if someone says, I'm thinking of nothing, you would be tempted to think that what they're implying is they have somehow made their mind stop thinking. They've, they've been able to control their thoughts, and all the thoughts are gone, and what's there is emptiness. But this is why I like Thich Nhat Hanh's uh, question where he says, well, is nothing something? What is the something that's there when all those thoughts aren't there? Because there's something there, right? The very nature of being human, of having a brain that works, is that it's always going. So the absence of one thought may just be filling the mind with another thought. And I think that seems a little bit more along the lines of what I understand mindfulness meditation to be as a practice. So I was thinking about this concept with boredom, right? And with with my kids, and, and some of you may feel this during the summer times. I usually feel this on weekends, and then especially during the summer, when we break away from our routine and we don't have a, a standard routine to follow, suddenly things can be a little bit difficult. I don't know if you guys notice this, but in our family, we can get a little bit more cranky with each other after a few days of of, of nothing, that nothingness, which is actually somethingness, because there's, I think there's a lack in our ability to be bored. And I find it very interesting right now at this particular phase in our lives, because we just moved. We're going on, what, four or five weeks now of being in a new country, everything is different. The routine was entirely smashed to pieces and you couple that with there's no chance to rebuild the routine yet because school hasn't started. 
So here we are living the the days of nothingness with occasional somethingness and those something the somethingness that we're doing it it's big stuff you know we went and swam with whale sharks last week uh, uh last sunday i went and flew my paramotor 50 miles uh, along the coast so it's like i'm filling i'm filling some of the time in with a lo- with big activities but then the majority of the time we're sitting around thinking what do, what should what should we be doing we're all looking at ourselves bored right we don't have the tv programs that we're used to we don't have the the habitual activities that we can do that we're accustomed to from where we used to live Um, everything's new and it's really forcing us to kind of sit during these moments of of nothingness that are actually somethingness those are moments where we're sitting and thinking huh i i I miss this or the kids will say i miss this or that at home or this friend or that cousin so anyway, along all these lines of the nothingness and, and becoming comfortable with boredom, you know, I've been thinking about that a lot this week, thinking how can I help the kids to become more comfortable with this boredom and, and myself? And I've had the thought, well, we've been practicing mindfulness meditation, but I think this goes back to the misunderstanding of, of what the word conveys in the same way that the word nothing I think gives a a misunderstanding of what it really is. The word meditation does the same when we say, hey guys, we're going to practice our our meditation tonight or we're going to try to practice being more mindful. That immediately puts an idea in their head and whatever that idea is, I don't think it's accurate. And I think this is very common for us as practitioners. Anyone who's on the path or entering the path or interested in being more mindful, you have an idea of what that is and that may be the wrong idea. So I wanted to couple all of this with this notion, what if we swapped the idea of nothingness, making time for nothing, with the word suchness? You know, this is a word I've heard before and I like it. Suchness to me gives off this idea of this is just how things are and I'm just watching. The, The suchness of the moment. Making time for suchness to me is a more powerful way of practicing what mindfulness actually is. It's the moment where I sit and I'm just observing the suchness of the moment, the suchness of whatever emotions or thoughts or feelings I'm experiencing, including and, and perhaps especially the unpleasant ones, right? When we're bored, someone had said that boredom is just the lack of, of, of observing, the lack of seeing. And I, I agree with that because when we're bored, we're not looking close enough. You know, how can you be bored in a world where you can stare at any little thing and see an infinite number of interdependent connections with that thing, that, whether that be in space and t- or time? You know, what did it take for this moment to arise? That's a question I like to ask myself a lot in those moments where I'm feeling bored. And I think that is a little bit closer to the heart of what we're trying to practice with mindfulness practice. We're not trying to achieve nothingness. We're not trying to understand nothingness or to see emptiness. What we're trying to see, what we're trying to uh, observe is the suchness of how things are in that moment. This is how I feel. Oh, this is how I feel. Okay. And then maybe explore that a little bit. Why do I feel this way? Why does this thing make me, you know, why did this event trigger this feeling? Or at the end of the day, what we're gaining is comfort with the suchness of things and perhaps, if we're lucky, a little bit more understanding about the causes and conditions that lead to that suchness, that moment of suchness. I think that gets closer to being at the heart of taking this on as a practice where the end result is skillfulness, a much more skillful way of being with whatever is in that moment. So going back to the concept of boredom and with my kids, I think you know one thing I've been trying to change now is instead of saying at night, hey, let's sit down and practice meditation. I've been saying, guys, let's sit down and practice being bored. And they're like, okay. So we sit there and it's like, well, what do you, what happens when we're bored? And everyone's kind of looking around, but see now it's, it's triggered this attentiveness. It's almost like, well, wait a second. How do I know when I'm bored? Well, I don't know. You tell me. And it's like, they're, they're paying attention to how they're feeling and to looking for the signs that would say, oh, now I'm bored. But looking for the boredom has made them struggle to find the boredom, which is interesting because I think that's, that's the whole point is you're training 
your awareness to something, and then going back to Thich Nhat Hanh, right? Is that nothing something? Absolutely. In this sense, the nothingness is the something that's uh, actually helping them to be more uh, skillful with with practicing awareness and overcoming boredom. <laughs> so I wanted to share that because it is summer, and I'm sure several of you who have kids or who have broken away from the standard routine of, of things in the summer, sometimes it can be difficult and there's this yearning, especially at the end of summer, to go back to whatever the ordinary routine is. And then the, so, so it can be an invitation to, to use these moments of boredom as moments of, of triggering a way of practicing mindfulness that sometimes can be harder to do when we're back in the routine, in the mundane, you know, routine of things, because then we're back in, in uh, reactivity mode. We're just doing what we do because this is the routine. I get up, I take the kids to school, I come back, I go to work, or whatever that routine is, it may be harder for some people during those moments to practice being mindful or to practice those moments of uh, witnessing suchness because we're just in the routine and we're going about doing our thing. So this is a, an invitation to use the boredom of summer to say, well, what does that mean? How do I know when I'm bored? What does boredom look like? What does it feel like? Uh, whether you're doing this with, with your kids or just with yourself, the more you poke around and, and explore what boredom is and how it feels, the more elusive it becomes. And you may realize, well, wait a second, that's not boredom because now I'm interested in understanding what this is. And the very act of being interested makes it go away, right? Boredom's gone. So it can be a fun little uh, mindfulness practice or, or technique to work with. So that's the concept that I wanted to share. And as always, if you want to learn more about other concepts, you can always check out my books. They're all listed on noahrochetta.com. And feel free to, if you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share it with others, give it a review, a rating on iTunes or whatever. If you want to support the work that I'm doing with the podcast, you're welcome to make a donation. That's always appreciated. And you can do that on secularbuddhism.com. Click on the donate button. And that's all I have for now. I look forward to recording another podcast episode soon, hopefully giving you another topic of something to think about. And that's all I have for now. Thank you for listening. Until next time.